Okay, so at this point, we've developed pretty much all the tools we need to solve any problem involving a single spin one half particle in a magnetic field. So now I want to look at the next most complicated problem, which is two spin one half particles. And in this video, we're just going to look at how to describe the system. So uh, one thing we could say about this system is that, well, individually, there should be, you know, spin z1 operator and a spin z2 operator and a corresponding up and down kets, which I'm going to uh, switch notation here and use up and down arrows rather than plus and minus. And so, you know, this is our first particles in the spin up or the second particle can be spin down or the, in the first particle can be spin down or the, and then these states are second particle is spin up and second particle is spin down. And you might say initially, well, maybe these are our four basis vectors for the system. But uh, the problem with that is we can measure the spins of each of these particles independently. So you could measure, you know, the spin of both particles and get spin up for the first particle and spin up for the second particle. So really, our state should kind of be these individual states glued together. And that's exactly what we'll have. We'll have these four basis states, where I have one state where both particles are spin up, one state where the first one is up, second one is down, another one where the first one is down, second one is up, and then the last one where they're both down. And the symbol here, uh, it means chronic reproduct. That's not so important right now. And in fact, the, the technical details of what this means doesn't really matter. All, we just need some kind of notation to indicate that we're kind of gluing together these states. And it's not going to be any more complicated to work with these kind of things than it was uh, you know, in our, with our original systems. So the other thing is our operators will always be uh, written in terms of the Kronecker product of the operators in the individual states. And the way that these operators will act on our states is, for example, if I take an operator and I act on my uh, plot up up state, what I really mean by that is this, uh, you know, chronic product of these operators acting on this chronic product of my states. And all I'll do is I will act my O1 operator on the uh, state corresponding to the first particle. And my O2 operator is going to act on the uh, second state. So the operators belonging to the particular system only operate on the vectors in that system. So the operator, so the SE one operator would only act on the, the, uh, you know, these cats and not these cats. So it's just, uh, again, it's not any, any more difficult than what we've been doing. You just have to, uh, apply two different operators to two different states. So for example, what we could do is have this S one Z operator times this S two Z operator acting on the up, up state. And really what I mean by that is the S1Z operator acting on this state, chronic product with the S2Z operator acting on this state. And we know how to evaluate this because this is just, uh, when I act on this, I'll get an H bar over two. When I act on this, I'll get another H bar over two. And so I'll get, you know, factor that out. I'll get an H bar squared over four, uh, just times this original state, which is my up, up state. And notice that we didn't really have to write out this chronic or product stuff to evaluate this. We could have just said, okay, spin one Z ap operator acts on, you know, th this up part of the ket. So I get an H bar over two. Spin two Z operator acts on this up part. I get another H bar over two. So I get an H bar squared over four times the state. And that's exactly what we get. So in practice, we're never going to write out this uh, chronic or product stuff. We're just going to write out this with the understanding that this is what we really mean. And we don't have to write all this out because it's easy. It, it's not, um, I mean, we can work out what this is without, resor without resorting to this chronic or product notation. 
Another thing we can have is things like uh, an, a, an operator corresponding to the first state plus an operator corresponding to the second state. And that doesn't fit this form here. So really what we mean when we write this is that we're going to have the first operator tensor or chronic product with the identity operator acting on the second state. And the second term is going to be the identity operator in the first state acting on our chronic product with the O2 operator. And then what I'll get is I'll just get these two terms. So I'll have O1 acting on the first state and the identity acting on the second state, which just doesn't do anything. And then in the second term, I'll have identity acting on the first state, which doesn't do anything. And then O2 acting on the second state. Uh, but again, if I, uh, you know, if I work this out for a specific example, so S1Z plus S2Z, and I do this, what I end up with is these two terms. And again, I can just evaluate this using my eigenvalue relations. So I get h bar over 2 here and another h bar over 2 here. And I just get uh, these two things that add. So I get an h bar times my, times my up up state. And again, you don't need to result to this chronic or product uh, notation to figure that out. You could just say, OK, S1Z acting on up. That's going to give me an h bar over 2 times the same state. S2Z acting on this up gives me another h bar over 2 times the same state. So I just get an h bar over 2 plus an h bar over 2, which is h bar times the state, which is what I get. So that begs the question, why am I even bothering writing all this stuff out if you never actually have to work with that? You can just kind of work with this simpler notation with an understanding that what you really mean is this. And the reason for that is that most, while well, most of the time we don't need to worry about this chronic or product stuff, there will be times where to make sure we know what we're doing to evaluate things, it's going to be important to know that this is what's happening under the hood, kind of. And uh, we'll see examples of that in the next video.